That should help you this morning. Told you if you knew the answers, you'd always make a, a hundred, wouldn't you? Well, you know the answer if you know Christ. So I appreciate the good song. How many, uh, if you were honest, you don't have to say what it is. How many this morning came, uh, you had burdens, you had issues, had stuff on your mind, on your heart, and uh, God's helped you this morning. He's helped me this morning, and I'm thankful. He's, he's always on time, isn't he? Man, you came this morning, you thought, man, I just don't know how I'm going to get through it. And got to hear good testimony, got to hear uh, good singing, and uh, God ministers to us, and I'm thankful for that. A lot of times we talk about ministering to others, but before you can do that, you've got to be ministered to, and I'm glad the Lord does that. Luke chapter 11 this morning, Luke chapter 11. Isn't God good to us? Amen. Let's stand together if you're able to. If you're not, you, you remain seated, but if you're able to, we're going to begin in verse number 5 of Luke chapter 11. This is one of my, one of my favorite scriptures. Brother Jimmy and I were just talking a little bit about it. Uh, you know, I remember as a young Christian uh, hearing someone say this, that when we pray, we should ask one time because if we ask more than one time, we're showing our lack of faith in Christ problem with that is that that's not what Jesus tells us to do, right? And so sometimes, uh, do you feel this way? Sometimes I feel like I ask the Lord for the same thing over and over and over again. I'm going, well, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe this is not God's will, or maybe it's the fact that uh, I should just ask and trust that the Lord would answer. The problem is this. Uh, it's not that God is lacking power it, and it's not that God does not already, not already have the answer to what we're asking him for. He's, and it's not really that we're changing the mind of God by asking. It is that God is changing us. Right? right? And so the Bible said in Luke chapter 11 verse 5, He said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? Now that'd be a good start. Right. Have some friends. Amen? And then the Bible tells us this. To have friends you must do what? Show yourself friendly. Right you don't have any friends, you might want to look at your disposition. Good preaching. We must have, we must have some folks who don't have any friends around here because none of y'all are smiling at that. And so, you know, it's interesting. People say, I don't have friends. Why not? Well, because these people get on my nerves and these people get on my nerves and everybody gets on my nerves and nobody's at the intellectual level that I am and nobody's at the spiritual level I am. Well, you know what? You ought to look in the mirror because it sounds to me like you're the problem. Amen. To have friends, you got to show yourself friendly. So the Bible said, uh, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in, this guy's got at least two friends, right? Said, For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, I have nothing to set before him. I, I, I'd underline that if I were you. I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. I got a lot of friends like that, don't you? Trouble me not. Uh, the door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, uh, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, Receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Look at verse 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, uh, will he uh, for fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask, shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye, right, there it is, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And he was, uh, verse number 14, and I won't go in verse 14, we'll do that next time. Let's end with 13. So uh, I want to preach on this thought, the urgent request of a friend. The urgent request of a friend. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Speak to our hearts this morning about our opportunity to pray, our faith in asking 
And then our thankfulness in receiving. And I pray this morning for that one that, again, may be here that does not know you as Christ, that one walking far from you. Every one of us, we raised our hand, many. And if we didn't, we still, I can assure, uh, be assured that there are burdens here this morning. So meet every need, and we'll give you the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. You be seated. So can we agree this morning when we say something is urgent, it means it is, it is important. It, in other words, it, it demands immediate attention. If you've got a water leak in your house and uh, the basement or, or the bottom floor of your house is flooded and you call a plumber and says, is it urgent? Uh, I'd say that'd be urgent, right? If you've got uh, a water leak outside, that's not as urgent. Uh, so we have to look at things. It is uh, an urgent need. Oftentimes it gets met the most, right? If we have something, for instance, uh, we've got a bill, you get it in the mail, it says, hey, past due. If you don't pay it by 12 o'clock, we're going to cut your power off. I guarantee you, you're going to go and get that power taken care of. You may have something else due two weeks from now, but the urgent need is that moment at that time because if not, we got a problem, right? So if it is an urgent need, it is a now need, right? It's not a later, it's not someday in the future. It is now. I need it now. This, this situation Miss Amy's talking about, that's not a need for down the road. That is now kind of need, right? And I'm glad we got a, a God uh, that listens to those kinds of needs in our life. Urgencies change our motivation. When you see the urgency of something, it changes your motivation. If you go to the doctor tomorrow and he says, listen, uh, you're about uh, five days if you don't change the way you eat and you can't eat cupcakes and donuts all the time. If you don't change the way you eat, you're going to die. And I'm not talking about years down the road. I'm talking about the next few weeks. You know what? If you got any sense, you're going to say, as much as I love eating donuts, I need to cut them out or they're going to be doing my funeral. Can we agree with that? That is an urgent need. If the doctor tells you if you don't stop eating this uh, 50 years from now, something's going to happen. That's not as urgent a need. Can we agree there? Can we agree there? Amen. Amen. I like that. So when, when something is urgent enough, we will find the one who has the greatest ability uh, to meet our urgent need. It, it, as we just heard, listen, nobody in America could meet this need. So you know what they went? They went to the French. For one thing, right? The French, one thing, good. And so uh, what we do is when the need is urgent enough, it's not about uh, who can't meet the need, it is finding the one who can meet the need. So here this morning, as you and I have already discussed, we all have burdens, we all have urgent needs, and instead of making them known to everybody in this world, maybe we need to go to the one that can and will meet that need. Jesus gives us this example in this portion of scripture, when something is urgent enough, we will not quit until we get what we need. When it's urgent enough, you're not going to stop. When it's urgent enough, no money will keep you from getting it done. When it's urgent enough, no, uh, no amount of no's are going to keep you from getting it done. So it is God, it's good to know that we have a friend that is able and willing to meet our needs in times of urgency. Uh, God is not some God on the other side of the universe that's not concerned with us. He is concerned with us. And so how is it that we, that we get those needs met? How is it that we make that urgency a priority in our life? Well, let's look at scripture. Number one, in this scripture, I see that we, our persistency. We have to have persistence to get this done. The Bible said in verse eight, he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Now, automatically, that draws a red flag, doesn't it? Because I don't know about you, but if I'm going to come to your house at midnight, uh, that means there's something going on right then that can't wait till the morning. Amen? If I'm going to go calling and knocking on your door, knowing that you are trigger happy, amen, at midnight, the, the, the need is urgent. It cannot wait till tomorrow. It cannot wait until you wake up. It can't wait till you have your coffee. It has to take place right now. And so the Bible said he went to him at midnight and he said to him, friend, lead, uh, lend me three loaves. Let me have something that I need, not for me, but for somebody else. And so the Bible said for a friend of mine in his journey, in verse 6, come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. So it seems to me like, first of all, the, first, the guy that's asking may not have made preparation. Can we agree with that? 
he didn't have anything. Now we look and we say, well, he should have bought something. Well, the, the, the fact is, how many times have you and I uh, got, kind of got caught unprepared with some things? I mean, I know we ought to be in church, right? I know we ought to be there every time the doors are open. I know we should be praying every day. I know we should be studying our Bible. I know we ought to be soul winning. But let's be honest. Sometimes we don't necessarily, it's not that we're out in sin. It's just we don't make very good preparation sometimes. Let me, let me help you, Baptist. We're procrastinators. Not me, preacher. Is that why you come dragging in the last minute, can't make it to Sunday school, can't hardly get here on Sunday night, Wednesday night? Hello. So he goes on to say, and he from within shall answer and say, this is the way our friends are, right? Trouble me not, the door is now shut, my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. So here it is, here's the persistence. Guy said, listen, I need, some, I need some food. I've got a friend that came in. Maybe he dropped in unexpectedly. He said, I don't have anything to give him. And the guy said, well, wait a minute here. You don't understand. It's midnight. Everybody's in bed. Uh, come back tomorrow. And he said, no, i got to have it now. Because, see, in that culture, hospitality meant something. Doesn't mean much today, right? Doesn't matter today, so we're just going back and tell that guy he shouldn't have been bothering you at midnight. In that culture, hospitality was important. Today it ought to be important as well, by the way. But it was, it was an insult. It was a reproach for him not to give him something for his journey. And so the request is here, right? You see the request. It was an unexpected need. It popped up. We looked, so we should have prepared. Maybe so, but at this moment, it's urgent, right? How many of you have ever been there? You didn't prepare, whatever. It's urgent. I'm glad God still hurt. hears urgent requests. Even though we should have prepared, we didn't. But God still hears us. A need we cannot meet. He could not meet this need. He didn't have it, right? You ever been there? Now, God, if this doesn't take place... Here's what's going to happen. You know the need, right? It's urgent. You can't do it. If, if this guy could uh, make him some t peanut butter toast because he had bread, he'd have done it. But he couldn't. He didn't have any bread. And so it does not matter when the need occurs. We make the request if the need is urgent enough. It didn't matter it's 12 o'clock, right? The guy could have said, look, sorry, I don't have anything. We'll get up. I'll get up early and go to the grocery store. No, the need was then. And when something gets urgent enough, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 5 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, listen, I know your prayer time is this time, but my friend, when God lays it on your heart and burdens your heart, it's time right then to make that urgent request known. So you see the request, but then notice the response in verse 7. The Bible said, he says, trouble me not. Don't bother me. Listen to me, Christian friend. Don't be like that guy. I don't have time. Uh, am I on here? Because some of you look at me like, you don't mind being the guy asking, but you don't want to be the guy that's being asked. Right? You don't mind asking somebody to help you do something, but when it comes to somebody asking you, you don't have time. Okay, let me, time out. Let me get bold with you. Make time. Make time. I don't have time. You got time. You got 24 hours in a day just like everybody else. Your clock didn't stop at 22 hours. You got 24. The problem is we don't make time. We make time for things we want to do. And we live in a day, Brother Dane, let's be honest. We live in such a selfish day unless it benefits me somehow, I'm not going to do it. Hey, man. Boy, I'm out of, out of just... Anchor it down here for a while because I can see it on some of your faces. Huh? Seriously. If somebody knocked on your door at 12 o'clock at night and they said, listen, I got a problem. Uh, it, it wasn't a big problem to this guy that, that was being asked because he had the food, right? I got a problem. Uh, So-and-so dropped in on my house. I ain't got anything to eat and feed them. Most of you wouldn't get out of the bed to start with. But if you did... You know what? You, you wouldn't even open the door. 
You'd call them or text them. Sorry, we're asleep. Don't bother us. Right? And I know that I know that where we live, folks. You say, well, I'm not going to do for them. They wouldn't do for me. It's not about that. Amen. Do you want to be like Christ or you want to be like the world? Because let's be honest, child of God. The reason our churches are not full because we act more like the world than we do Jesus. Doesn't matter what you get out. This guy didn't get anything out of it. What do I get out of it? Listen, I'm a transactional person. If, if I give something, I got to get something. You are. You're getting the hand of God. You're getting the blessing of God. You're getting the nod of, you're getting the smile of Jesus. Amen. Because here's the deal. There are many that will not inconvenience themselves to help anybody. They're always on the asking end, not on the helping end. What are you? Let's get real. You want to talk about the golden rule, but here's the problem, Brother Eddie. The golden rule always applies to somebody else. Do unto others as you'd have them do it. You know what they're saying? Well, you know what Brother Matt ought to do? If he wants this, he ought to, he ought to act that way to somebody else. Yeah. Brother Tim wants that, he ought to act that way to somebody else. You're right, but when you look in the mirror and you see you and you realize you don't have any friends, you don't have anybody that's going to help you and nobody cares, cares about you, maybe you ought to look and say, you know what? It's because I haven't cared about anybody else. Uh-oh. How we doing? Do we need to just go ahead and give an altar call? I don't need to finish the message. Sowing and reaping, right? Maybe nobody is meeting your need because when you could, you didn't meet somebody else's need. It's not that they can't help, it's that they won't help. Listen, I, I, I get it. Uh, I get it when people can't help. I don't get it when people won't help. I, I, listen, I'm going to go ahead and just get plain. That's the same thing with giving. Some of you, some of you, it's not that you can't give, it's that you won't. You got the means, you just spend on other junk. You'll rob God so you can have, you can have a, you know, a extra outfit or an extra pocketbook or an extra hunting rifle. You got 47 rifles now, you don't need another. You can't kill a deer but with one. But you'll rob God to take 17 vacations Huh? Oh. Oh. Pay dirt. You'll make sure your kids got everything, but you don't care about the rest of the kids. Hey, you're dressed to the nines, but you don't care if somebody rolls in here and don't have any clothes. Am I on here? Because, see, something, something, we've become so much like the world, we can't influence the world because we're just like them. It's not that they can't help, it's that they won't. They got all the, tra he had all the goods. He had the food, no, no telling how much, how many groceries he had in there. But here this guy's saying, can I just get three loaves of bread? He may have had a hundred loaves of bread. The guy just needed three, he was urgent. And he said, nah. But it's good to know the Lord's sensitive to our needs. Then you see the reward in verse number eight said, though he will not rise and give him because he is, uh, he is his friend. Listen, time out. Let me say this. I wouldn't put him in my friend list. Would you? I mean, he, he's not going to be in my inner circle. He's not going to be the guy I call on when I need something. Burn me once, shame on me. Burn me twice, ain't going to happen again, right? We can be friendly, but he wouldn't be my friend to where I'd call on him a whole lot if he, here I had a need, right? Now I'd probably help him because that's just what we're supposed to do. But it's good to know the Lord's sensitive to our need. Hey, it's good to the Lord when you call on him. He's not going to say, I don't have time for you. Hey, it's good to know at midnight when you have a need and nobody else can meet that need and nobody else cares that there is a God in heaven that never sleeps, never slumbers, that is always alert to the, the prayers of his children. I'm so glad, amen, that you can call on God and he'll always answer. The reward. There is a reward for persistency. The word importunity means this, boldness which persists over time. Boldness that the guys first time listen. I, can't you hear him? <clears throat> listen, I don't mean to bother you. I know it's a bad time of the night, 
And I know you, you know, on a, you know how we do. You got you to gotta flour it up. And finally, he said, can I, can, can I borrow three loaves of bread? And that guy on the side probably got the Baptist sigh. <sighs> really? You're going to get me up at midnight for, for bread? Right? And finally, the Bible said he's persistent. He probably then said, look, I, I get it, but I really need this bread. I've got a friend that came in. You know the, the whole thing about hospitality, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry. The guy got, probably got ready to shut the door, and he stuck his foot in there and said, you're not getting me. I'm taking some bread home with me. Right? I need the bread, not for me, but to meet the need of someone else. Every step he got more persistent in asking that. And my friend, sometimes, and I'm not talking about being rude to God. Okay, I'm not talking about demanding from God. I'm saying that you are asking as if it has already been answered. That's called faith. So there is a reward for persistency. Don't give up. Persistency pays off. So we see our persistence. Then number two, look at our promise in verse 9 and 10. And he said, I say unto you, ask, and it shall. Now, now, now again, does that say Maybe. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone. Is that in your Bible? You believe, you believe your Bible's uh, inspired? Preserved? Perfect? Well, for everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone. Not 99%, 100%. So here's our promise. See our supplication. Asking for a need in our lives or someone else's lives. We're, we're asking for a need. We're not asking for wants here. When you pray about your need, it's a whole lot different than praying about your want. Right? God may not give you your want, but God will always give you your need. Now here's the problem. Brother Matt, sometimes we have to adjust our version of our need to what God says our need is. If you hadn't figured this out, I feel like you probably have. God knows more than we do. He knows what you need before you knew what you needed. So sometimes God is telling us, you say, well, listen, God, you don't understand. I need this. And God said, no, you don't. Here's what you need. No, you're not understanding, Lord. I need this. And you say, no. He'll say, no, this is what you need. And finally, you're going, you're right, Lord. That's what I need. Yeah? You ever been there? I have. So petition from, some, from someone else lesser to someone greater. We're not asking uh, listen, our brother in Christ to help. We're asking the God of glory who has all power and all knowledge to help. So notice in verse 10, For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth him that knocketh it shall be opened. So the petition we're making is for us or someone else to someone who absolutely every time can meet the need. So notice this. It says this in verse number 9. Ask and it shall be. Right? It is in the present tense. It is not in the past tense or the future tense. It's in the present tense. So what it means is this. Keep on asking. You with me? Keep on asking. Listen, can we agree this morning that America needs revival? Can we agree churches need revival? Can we agree if something doesn't take place, our nation is, is done? Well, you, you see, our flesh will tell us this. Well, you prayed about it and God didn't do anything, so it must be God's will for the nation to go down the tubes. Maybe not. Maybe what you and I need to do is persistently pray for our nation. Maybe what we need to do is persistently pray for revival, persistently pray for our children, our grandchildren, our parents, our grandparents, our neighbor, our friends. Maybe what we're doing is we're not persistently praying. We're, we're, we've stopped. Now, this guy could have said, you know what, you're right. The guy should have ate before he came. But he said, no, there's a need. Now, listen to me, church. In our flesh, we are justified in saying, listen, they made their bed, let them lie in it. Yeah? 
That's what our flesh tells us to do. What the Bible tells us to do is to pray. Yeah? Because automatically I can see it in your face and I'm the same way because we're made out of this stuff called flesh. When we start looking at this in verse 9 and 10 and we look at this promise, we're automatically we're saying, well, listen, anything I pray for, God's got to answer according to that scripture. Well, what's this guy asking for? He's not asking for wealth. He's not asking for health. He's not asking for a better job, right? He's not asking for a bigger house. You with me? What he's asking for is bread. What are the necessities of life that the Bible tells us? Bread and raiment. Yeah? Yeah? So before you get all bold and going to God saying, listen, in your, in your word, you said ask and ye shall receive and therefore you're bound by your word. So when I ask you this, you have to answer me and you have to, he may answer you, it just may not be what you want to hear. Asking in the mild, uh, mildest form of our petition. So here, as we look at this scripture, asking is, is asking. It's mild, right? All right, now look, let's look on. Seek and you shall find. So we see our supplication. Next we see our seeking. Asking, uh, but adds action to it. Seeking is more than just asking. It is adding action to it. Maybe God said, okay, you want some bread? You got to go over here to get it. Listen, church. You don't see your church grow? Fine. Get out there and win some people to Christ. You want to see your finances do better? Work more. Amen. You want to have some finances? Go to work. Amen. I mean, sometimes God's saying, you're not going to sit there and do nothing and then come to me and ask stuff when there's some things you could be doing. So he could have he could have yelled out the window to this guy. Doesn't say how far. Maybe it's across the street. Brother Kennedy could have yelled out and said, hey, look to him. Got this guy that showed up at my door. Need some bread. How about bring it over to me? No, he didn't do that. He left his house and went to this guy's house and started knocking on the door. So it may be that God is saying, okay, in order for us to elevate the persistency and the urgency, you're going to have to do more than what you're doing. You want to see your children come to Christ? You want to see your co-worker come to Christ? You can pray all you want to, but God's maybe saying put some feet on your prayers. Amen. So our seeking, it speaks of our diligence. Prayer is not a casual exercise, but requires diligence and fervency. All right, then our striking. Now, by the way, don't get this wrong now. We're not talking about hitting each other. The Bible said, uh, uh, knock and it shall be opened. So here's a, another. Asking, acting, this is persevering. So we're asking is the mildest form. We're seeking, that is the action form, but now we're persevering because we are, we are doing more. Uh, we're, we're moving it to the next level. Keep on knocking and the door will be open is what he's saying. We demonstrate our faith by knocking continuously. How, how, how often do you pray for your children? How often do you pray for your neighbor? How often do you pray for that need? It's just once in a while, it's not that urgent, is it? If it's urgent enough, you'd make it three, four, five, six, seven times a day, whatever it is God lays on your heart, right? So our, our promise is that he'll answer, okay? Now, let me finish with this, our provision, verse 11 through 13. He's, he goes in this example. He said, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. So he's, he's, he's putting in action. He's basically saying, listen, guys, if you're a dad, Right? And assuming probably all of them were. He said, if your father uh, and your son asks bread of you, uh, will he give him a stone? If he asks for this bread, are you going to give him a rock? If he uh, uh, asks for a fish, something to eat, you going to give him a, 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 a snake? If he asks for an egg, all these things are food, right? A need. You going to give him a scorpion? If... Ye, then, being evil, right, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more how shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask of him? So uh, here's what he's saying in our provision, uh, that he gives appropriate gift. 
an appropriate gift. God will not refuse the request of his children. If we ask, Brother Matt, God's going to answer and give you a good gift. And what he's saying, Brother Ron, is this. If, 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 you be, if you're, not, you're not God, I'm assuming, is anybody, any, fellas, any of you God? I didn't, I didn't say you think you're as smart as him. I'm saying no. So what he's doing is he's saying if you who are imperfect, sinful, right, not perfect like God, if you know how to get, your son's not going to come to you and say, Dad, I'm hungry, and you say, here's a rock. Amen. By the way, kids, your, your parents love you just because they're not giving you exactly what you asked for doesn't mean they don't love you. Amen. So, God does not refuse the request of his children. He gives us what we need. What's that mean? That God's gifts are not deceptive. You think well, God, God's trying to, how many times have you, and you see this, you hear people say this, God's, God's playing a trick on me or God's, God's doing this uh, for whatever reason. God never does that. He's going to give you what you need, right? God's not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. He's not trying to slip one over on you. They are appropriate to meet our need. Every gift God gives are appropriate. Here is everything that this son was asking for was bread, right? Fish, egg, needs. Jesus is saying, you wouldn't give him a, a rock. You wouldn't give him a snake. You wouldn't give him a scorpion if he asked for these things. So if you, you being imperfect and fleshly know how to do that, how much more, right? So he gives an appropriate gift, then he gives an apparent gift. In other words, it is obvious that a father would not give hurtful gifts, so why would our Heavenly Father do that to us? If he loves us more than we could love our own children, why would our Heavenly Father hurt us with the gifts that he gives us. And then finally he gives an abundant gift. Notice the Bible said, if ye then being evil, if you give what is appropriate, right? He's assuming, now some of you dads, I'm, I'm, he's right about us, right? If your kid was hungry, you wouldn't give him a rock to eat. I didn't say you tried to cook and it tasted like a rock. I'm, I'm talking about a literal rock, right? You want a fish, you wouldn't give him a serpent. So he's saying if you wouldn't do that, if you wouldn't give him the, the, the necessity, if you know how to give good gifts unto your children, notice these words. How much more shall your heavenly father so here's you I mean dads let's face it very seldom do we ever give our kids the minimum right we want to, we want to give them above the minimum I mean, I, I, they could live off bread and water. But do you make your kids eat bread and water three times a day and say, well, that's, I'm meeting your need? No. Because what they'll do is say, can we go to McDonald's? They don't even say that now. It's Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I, I, that word bothers me. Chick, Chick-fil-A. That's how people say it, Chick-fil-A. Can we go to Chick-fil-A? No, I'm tired of Chick-fil-A. I don't want to eat more chicken. I want a hamburger. Praise God, that's American. You don't, you don't hear the baseball, hot uh, chicken, uh, apple pie and Chevrolet. You don't hear that. It's not American. They throw hamburgers in there somewhere. So they say, all right, let's go to Chick-fil-A. Then when you go to Chick-fil-A and they say, Dad, can I get the eight-piece meal and ice cream and 
No, no, no. You don't say no. We would like four buns. That's it. <laughs> you don't do that. Brett, that's enough though, right? You don't do that. You give them more. And the Lord's saying, listen, if, if you're going to give them more, and you're evil, right? You, you, don't, you, don't have the, you don't have the ability. You don't even have the will sometimes to do that. Because so, the, guy, the guy had the ability, but he wasn't going to get up and help this guy, right? He said, if you, if you will do the more than the minimum, how much more will I do? <laughs> Shoo. God, God does abundantly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's how he operates. Now I'll finish with this. You look at your life and say, well, that's not so in my life. I'm trying to serve God and look how hard I've got. Tell you what you do. I say it all the time. You're going to hear it again. Travel somewhere. Travel somewhere. Won't you go somewhere where if they can find what you're throwing in your garbage can to eat for a meal, they're thankful for it. Hello? Won't you go somewhere where you go to church, they don't have this Conditioned air. I preached in Jamaica a few years ago, hottest place I've ever been in my life in August. No air condition, had some fans, didn't work, Brother Danny. Maybe they worked, didn't have them plugged in, I don't know. I had sweat, flesh, bones, sinew, I mean, just falling off of me, it's so hot. They're happy as they could be. You got more than what you need. You may not have all you want. Big difference. Maybe when you think what you need, you go to God in prayer and God don't give it to you, maybe you ought to say instead of God didn't meet my need, it's saying maybe I didn't need what I thought I needed and God met my need just fine. The urgent request of a friend... Now, I'll finish with this. We want the Lord to be that kind of friend, and he is. But here's my question to you. Are you that kind of friend? Brother Ron, I found this in my life. I'm 50 years old now. If I was really in a place where I needed help right then, there's a handful of people I could call. Because, Brother Jimmy, you know what everybody says it. Now, if you ever need anything, you call me. Okay, but I've mildly put that to the test, and even in some of the small things, it's like, well, I really don't have time right now. Yeah? So I make a mental note, if I'm really in need, I ain't calling that guy. i tell you what I did. A couple years ago, we were coming back from Canada. I told you this. They stopped us at the border. Wasn't going to let us in. I think it's Jimmy Robertson's fault. But I, they got me and said, hey, you ever been in trouble with the law? I said, no. Well, your passport's flagged. What do you mean flagged? We just got back from the Dominican. It wasn't flagged. It wasn't flagged when I went into Canada. He said, no, it's flagged. Something's wrong here. I was a little nervous. You know who I called? Danny Payne. I thought, man, if anybody can get me out of this, it'd be Danny. He's a lawman, right? I didn't call him and say, hey, preacher, listen, hope everything goes well. You find people that will help you, you can trust, they're invaluable. But even in that, Brother Johnny, Sometimes they'll let you down, not even mean to. But the Lord never lets you down. Amen. Every time, 100% of the time, he'll always give you what you need. Here's the problem. Are you praying? Right? 
Are you, are you knocking? Are you seeking? Are you asking? Well, don't blame God if you're not asking. Don't blame God when you're not seeking. Don't blame God when you're not knocking. Urgent request. What's urgent in your life right now? Now, I'm going to say this. We're close. I'll promise you every person in here knows somebody, friend, family, neighbor, co-worker, that if you're honest, you know in your heart. And I'm, not, I'm not saying judge. Right? I'm, not, I'm saying you know in your heart by their testimony, by their fruit, they're not saved they're on their way to hell. Everybody in here knows somebody like that. When's the last time you got on this altar? Shed tears. Or do you have this attitude? Well, they've heard the gospel. They grew up in church, so if that happens to them, it's on them. No. Something gets urgent, we get desperate. When we get desperate, we make it a priority. When we make it a priority the, the ear of God opens up, doesn't it? What in your life is urgent? Let's stand together. Who in your life is urgent? Let's bow our heads this morning. No one's looking around. Many are making the way to the altar this morning. God spoke to your heart about something. If he did, you come. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, won't you do this? Won't you just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, I need you to pray for me this morning. I won't come to you. I won't embarrass you. I won't send anybody to you. I just want to pray for you. If I died right now, I wouldn't go to heaven because I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. You might be a good person. You may be a member of a church, but you've never placed your trust in Christ. And you'd be honest and say, I need your prayers this morning, preacher. Would you do that? You slip it up, put it right back down. Is there one? Is there one? Don't be embarrassed. All right. Many are on the altar. Oh, what, what a good crowd. So if you come this morning, God's laid something on your heart, someone on your heart to pray for. You won't be by yourself. Need somebody to pray with you? Well, we've got workers that'll pray with you. But maybe you just need to, maybe that's out of your comfort zone this morning. Isn't that good? To get out of your comfort zone? You got a whole group of people already around the altar praying. You won't be by yourself. What's urgent in your life? Who is urgent in your life? You mind the Lord, people still coming. You say everything's going good in my life, preacher. Yeah, but there's somebody, I promise you this, there's somebody in your life that has an urgent need. You may know about it, you may not. You may just have that feeling something's not right. Maybe you have an urgent need. You just mind God. I'm convinced of this. If God's people would start praying for friends and family and lost loved ones and neighbors and the community, we'd see a great moving of God again. We'd see people saved again. God's not lost an ounce of power. The gospel's not lost an ounce of power. We stop praying. We stop being concerned. We stop, we stop asking and stop seeking and stop knocking. Now we're seeing the results of it. We don't like it. Good. Then let's do something about it. Let's get on our knees again. Let's be people of prayer again. Let's not be embarrassed to call out to God. 
Let's not be embarrassed to shed tears on the altar. You know what causes us to do that? Pride. Just pride. Just come as you are this morning. You, you're not a Christian, never been saved. Just come as you are this morning. You didn't raise your hand. That's okay. Raising your hand didn't do anything but acknowledge where you are. Just mind God. 